Hello fellow Sworn Knights of Middle-earth and welcome to the Dol Amroth faction guide. Today I'm going to cover the faction of Dol Amroth, uh, both in the early game, the mid game and the end game. And we're going to take a look at the economy and the military. And in the end we're going to take a look at all their units, uh, how to use them properly and against what units you want to face them with. So that's going to be exciting. Now, let's start with the early game. You hold Dol Amroth, Methrast, Linhir, and Gobel Tolfalas. Usually, you will want to go for Edhelon quite early on. They have a strong garrison, but that will be no problem for you. You start with making about 1,900 uh, a turn, which is not too bad, but it's quite bad considering how you start off. Uh, so we are going to do some steps to make your economy a little bit better. First of all, you have a very huge upkeep on these ships. Altogether, you lose about 1000 a turn just having these ships. And you can just imagine how much you'll lose in 10 turns. That's going to be 10,000. So you will want to just disband all the ships you can. Uh, you will eventually need ships, but it's just going to be much more profitable just recruiting the ships when the time comes. But it really matters if, if you're going to go and push straight for Umbar early on. Uh, like within 10 turns you might want to keep these ships. But usually that's not a good idea. But it's totally up to you and how you want to play this campaign. But there we already make 1000 more a turn. And now you also want to make sure you have free upkeep on most of your units. Uh, that even includes moving Prince Adrahil to this fort. And over here you will want to move these troops to these, this fort. Yes, but be aware of this rebel yes, army right here, Captain Nimradan. With these two units you can actually, if you manage your troops properly, be able to take him out because your general are just so overpowered but once he is defeated you'll have to move uh, these at least one of these units to the fort and we get some more free upkeep now these guys will probably be needed at Ethelon so I usually just move them around to this fort in the first turn and from then on you'll have to move them up here and start going on to Ethelon because you definitely want that extra upkeep per turn so I usually also start recruiting units here very early on. Now there's another rebel army that you want to be aware of and it's around it's around here somewhere. Yeah. So you want to be aware of this army as well. But if you just bring Imrahil with some of these guys you'll be able to take them out, no deal. Now what buildings do you want to build first? There's a lot of buildings that you will want to build as a Lamroth, and you have a lot of uh, good options. And this includes, of course, first of all, the Governor's Quarters. Uh, we actually forgot to take a look at Gobel Tolflas, you also hold this region. And you definitely want to move Baragon to the fort. And here you will want to build the Meeting Hall to get free upkeep on these guys. However, you do not have the garrison quarters, you'll ha have to move these guys to the fort uh, eventually, but they're going to be mad at the moment. So you have to wait until you have built this, and then you can just recruit some coastal wardens. And that's going to be a nice exchange. But yes, back to what you want to build. I usually go for the governor's quarters, just because the Amroth units are very, they have a very high upkeep. Just look at the Amroth in Pikeman alone, that's 310 and that's way more than a mine make per turn So it's going to be much more profitable and just look at these guys You're going to earn much more from the free upkeep that these guys uh, cost So and you usually want the Amroth to be a huge recruitment center and Be able to defend itself against Corsair invasions, which might happen So I usually just go for the governor's quarters here in Methrast I usually do the same and in Lin here as well. Just build the governor's quarters. It's very much like with Gondor if you have seen my other faction guide and if you have not I suggest to go and take a look at it. 
because you definitely want to just build meeting halls everywhere because you don't have a lot of regions and you want to be able to defend them properly because Corsair invasions will come from Umbar unless Umbar has fallen and this starts around the 25th turn and you want to be able to have enough troops in your cities of course you'll be able to have a lot of troops in the forts as well so you don't need to recruit too many of or build too many of these uh, governor's quarters eventually you will want to build communal farming in Dolamroth for example uh, because Dolamroth is a very wealthy region and that's part of because they have a lot of population growth and if you just keep uh, giving this a even higher population growth in the long run you're going to earn a lot of money out of Dolamroth but the mines is also a very good option of course in other cities you will might want to go for ports in the long run they will yield much of the same as the communal farming does uh, however they will probably give you even better trade and you will want them because you can actually recruit Haven God out of this building uh, but it's it's quite expensive and therefore I suggest you perhaps build the Mason's Hall before the ship rides because you're going to save a lot of money just by building the Mason's Hall and that's basically the early game summarized you want to build mines, meeting halls, Mason's Halls, ports and communal farming uh, this very much depends on the situation you're in and if you want to play aggressive or not but usually go for the governor's quarters first and then porch and communal farming or mines it's yeah it's kind of the same if you want more instant money go for the mines if you want a more long-term benefit go for the porch and the communal farming now your natural enemies they are of course umbar or the are adenaim as they're called and usually a strategy for Dol Amroth is just to rush Umbar as quickly as possible. That's a very popular strategy. Um, so you will probably face off with these guys quite early on. And if you do not face them, they will face you with their Corsair raids. So be aware of that. Now other enemies include the Haradrim, which will usually push up towards Barathan and Tir Thoros. But you can also be quite unlucky and have the Varags of Khan push towards Thirithoros and you will be surrounded by both Harad and the Varags of Khan which is quite unfortunate but it, it might happen sometimes but of course this very much depends on whether you attack the Arad Nine first or uh, if you start to attack this way another strategy is to go for Barad Khan, Thirithoros and Hadhanor and then start pushing up here against uh, Mordor uh, this could be good because you will get po possibly Eastern Skillet and Minas Morgul, which means after the barracks event you will be able to recruit the uh, veterans of Oskiliath and the Minas Ethel Guardians and the Guards of Oskiliath, which just gives you three extra elite units. Uh, on the other hand, you're going to be stretched very far and you're going to be attacked from three different factions, which can be very devastating. So most people just go straight for Umbar and then expand from this side as well as from this side. And that's a very popular strategy. So your enemies is going to vary uh, in, and it really depends on what strategy you take. So now let's go over to the mid game. It's not very much um, different from the early game to be honest. But you will probably have expanded over here quite a lot, as well as over here. It depends on the strategy, once again. But for now, you might want to start building some armor upgrade buildings, just because it's nice to get some armor upgrades on your troops at this point. And your enemies will probably be about the same. It usually doesn't vary that much. Like for Gondor, these factors uh, depends very much on early, mid and end game, but for the, the Lamroth, it's quite much the same to be honest. But it depends, you could even go for Endwife if you have the capacity. It's just very much up to you. So in the end game, you will of course want to start uh, recruiting 
uh, some real cavalry and some real troops. So you will want to go for the barracks and the stables. And you will be able to field one of the greatest cavalry in the game. So you definitely want to build the stables. That's very important. Now, and military-wise, you're going to be facing a lot of the similar factions. You might even have started to attack Rune at this point. Again, it depends, but I think you'll have to expand into them after a while, around this time. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to say about Bill Amroth on the campaign map. Now, you will also, in the early game, might want to go for the Fiefdom Barracks. It will allow you to recruit a lot of uh, very nice units from Gondor, including the Pinoth Gelling Cavalry and Phallus Pikemen, Blackroot Whale Archers, Lamnon Clansmen and Lebanon Marines. It will just give you a lot more units of feel, and it will give you a great variety. And that's basically it for the campaign map. Uh, now I'll see you on the battle map. Alright, welcome to the battle map. We're now going to take a look at all of the Lamroth units. And we're also going to take a look at some more of the units they can recruit uh, from Gondor, the Fiefdom Barracks, and some other units as well. We're also going to take a look at the enemy units which you want to fear. So we're going to start to take a look at the Lamroth units. And we're going to start with the Gondor Militia. This is your very basic infantry unit. And they are about the cheapest to get. Uh, the cost of ones is a bit cheaper. But they have 10 total defense, 6 attack, and 3 charge bonus. 3 charge bonus. Uh, they're, they're good at holding the line. They're not really a very strong unit. But in early game, they will be at least as good as your enemy's infantry. And even a bit better sometimes. A 10 total defense is quite good. They rely pretty much on their shield and armor. So you want to make sure they don't get shot in the back. Then they're going to lose a lot of their values. Definitely. And you might want to avoid armor piercing as well. But it's not too much of a problem with these guys. They still have a lot of defense skill. Now the Coastal Wardens is your... Essentially your trash unit, they only cost 500, but they can be very cost-worthy because they have 6 missile attack. That's not very good for a javelin unit, but they are nonetheless a, a javelin unit. Especially against the enemy cavalry, they can be quite uh, effective because they're skilled against mounts, considering they have javis. But I usually just throw all my javis that I can with these guys. And then I, if I really need to use them in melee, I just throw them in, if it's necessary. But I, I try to keep to avoid them out of melee, because they only have 3 melee attack and 2 charge bonus. That's very, very poor. So, it, it can be a nice unit, a cost-efficient unit, if you use them correctly. But usually you don't want to throw these guys into melee, if it's not utterly necessary. Now here comes your kind of first... Uh, arch unit, you don't really get a lot of them, but they have three melee, three missile attack, which is that's pretty poor to be honest. And they have nine total defense, which isn't that great either. But they do have some, some of their stats come from the armor, so in archer versus archer, they could be effective. But they're more for just having some archers in your roster, they're not really that powerful. But again, your roster relies much on cavalry and infantry combination and archers is not often the units you really want to uh, recruit a lot of. Now coming to the Amrothian Guardsmen, this is a pretty nice spearman which you can recruit from the very beginning and they're usually a very good holding unit. Once again they only have 4 attack and 3 charge bonus but the total defense is very good, 14 is quite good in this early phase. A lot of it comes from the shield and armor, so you want to avoid armor piercing. It's very much the same situation as with Gondor's units. A lot of your units have a lot of armor, so just make sure you stay out of armor piercing units. But these guys are definitely one of your best early game units. Then we come to the Amarothian Pikemen, uh, which I would consider probably the most cost efficient unit in the early game. 
considering they are pikemen, uh, they're just going to be very good. You know what I say about pikes. They are just overpowered in this game because of their pike animation. But they are very susceptible to arrows. They don't have any shield, but they do have a little bit of armor. Uh, but if they these guys get shot in the back or get hit by Javis, they're going to lose a lot of men. So you want to make sure these pikes are are safe. But they will be very effective against enemy cavalry and they will definitely hold the line if you use them properly. Very good unit. Now we come to the Nimrodel Mariners. And this is a pretty good um, arch unit which comes from uh, the Lamroth in the early game. And they have 7 melee attack and 5 charge bonus. So they are like uh, even better than these guys in melee. So they're quite a versatile unit. And they also have 5 missile attack which isn't too bad. Uh, at least it works out. And 16 total defense. That's, that's very good. That's very very good. Uh, even though a lot of it comes from the armor. So don't, don't throw these guys against uh, armor piercing units. But against some... Um, Corsair Trash, these guys can probably rack up a lot of kills. At least hold the line uh, while you hammer an anvil with your cavalry. So after you have used up these guys uh, uh, arrows, just throw them into melee because they're going to perform pretty alright. Now we come to the Haven Guard. These guys are recruited out of the ports, uh, a, a reason to get ports itself. These guys are monsters, they have 15 attack. 8 charge bonus, that's pretty alright. And they have 23 defense, which is very, very good. However, as I said before, armor piercing unit is just going to crush this unit utterly. And they don't have much shield, so javelins will crush these guys. So just don't throw them into javis, they're going to lose a lot of men. But if you use this unit properly as a flanking unit and let them charge, they're going to rack up kills. And this is a very aggressive unit, so it fits very with the roster for the Lamroth because you have cavalry. So definitely put these guys on the flanks and they will do some very nice work for you. Alright, now we're going to take a look at the cavalry that the Lamroth can recruit in the early game. And that's the Gondor Cavalry Militia. They are essentially just like the Gondor Cavalry. They're not a very good unit, but as most cavalry they can be used to be very efficient. Uh, in the early game, as most cavalry units can. So, like, they're not a very excellent unit, but they will definitely get a lot of kills before they die. So, it's a nice, it's definitely a nice uh, recruitment. Now, the Amorphian Squires, here is where you start to get some real good cavalry. Um, they have 4 attack and 7 charge bonus, which is not that bad. They have 14 total defense, which is much better than the Gondor, Gondor Cavalry Militia. These guys are essentially an upgrade of these guys. And they are definitely much better. Uh, they, will, they will not fall as quickly as these guys. And you will definitely see that on the battlefield. They are very useful. Uh, and the last cavalry unit that you will get before the barracks event is the Royal Swan Guard, which is your bodyguard unit. They do essentially have the same stats as the Knights of the Silver Swan, your best cavalry unit. So these guys are one of the most overpowered generals in the game. Uh, because they are, of course, cavalry bodyguards. And these stats are just amazing. Uh, 9 attack, 14 charge bonus, that's just out of this world. And 33 defense, which is very, very good. However, there are very few. And often wise, your general might just die in a charge. Uh, that happens sometimes. Imrahil will actually get this unit, but his um, unit number will actually increase. So that's probably your best general, in my opinion. Uh, so these guys are definitely monsters. Definitely use these guys as your bodyguard. There's no reason to use other generals, in my opinion, except for perhaps... Prince Adrahil, your faction leader, which get the Talonites, which we'll take a look at uh, in a minute. Now, we're going to just take a look at the units which you get after the barracks event. And we're going to start with the Seaward Footman, which is uh, a very good 
infantry unit. They have 20 total defense and 9 attack. Pretty poor charge bonus, but they hold the line very well. They rely very much on their armor, definitely. So don't throw these guys against armor piercing units. But against archers they hold up very well because of their shield and armor. And their attack is pretty decent. So they will kill a lot of units. Definitely a good unit. Now we come to the Sea Watch Spearmen. These guys have 6 attack, 3 charge bonus, and 22 total defense, which is very good. So they're very good at holding the line, but as their counterpart to Sea Watch Footmen, they're very vulnerable to armor piercing. So, and they're going to perform very, very badly against armor piercing units. Uh, definitely. But they are skilled against mounts like the Amrothian Pikemen and the Amrothian Guardsmen. So they're, they're very good at dealing with cavalry because of their high total defense. And their attack is okay. But they're definitely very good for holding. Now we come to the Thirith IR Wardens. These are essentially on the same level as the Citadel Guard for Gondor. And these guys are definitely very good. 32 total defense, that's very, very excellent. And 8 attack is pretty, pretty decent for a Spearman unit like these guys. But as the other units, they're very vulnerable to armor piercing. So just don't let these guys meet the Corsair Savages. I'm going to show you the, these units in a minute. And then we have the Talon Knights, which your um, faction leader has as his bodyguard. These guys have 12 attack. That's excellent. And they have 30 total defense. Excellent as well. But again, vulnerable to armor piercing, which goes again for your whole roster. But these guys are definitely very good and they can get a lot of kills uh, if you put them against non-armor piercing uh, units. And they can take a charge or two and not get hurt too much. Definitely very good. And this is the Thirathair Wardens and the Talonites is essentially our best infantry units. Uh, except for some exceptions which I'm going to go through later. But in your pure Glamroth roster, these guys are the best you'll get in terms of infantry, uh, including the Haven Guard, but these guys are a bit better, in my opinion. <laughs> Alright, now we come to the cavalry, the real force in your army. These guys are what Glamroth is famous for. Not this unit, but the cavalry in general. So this is the first kind of unit you get after barracks went, uh, in terms of cavalry. 8 attack, 11 charge bonus, and 20 total defense. And these guys are not even your best cavalry unit. This is monster stats. Uh, they're quite vulnerable to other cavalry that is effective against cavalry. So that you want to stay out of. But these guys have lances. And if you just let them charge uh, poor infantry, they're going to completely devastate the units. They can rack up kills, and they're definitely a very good unit. And they're quite readily available as well, so you can recruit a lot of these guys. Just recruit a lot of these, they're, they're monsters. Now we come to the White Knights of Edhelon. You will need Edhelon for um, these guys, so in the early game, you want to make sure uh, <laughs> you take out Edhelon quite early, so that Gondor doesn't get Edhelon. Because then you will not be able to recruit these guys. These guys are essentially an archer cavalry unit. But they work very much uh, in melee as well. Just look at their... Like, their miss attack is 6, which is quite decent. That's on par... That's even better than the Nimrodil Mariners. And their melee attack is 10, and their charge bond is 5. Not a very good charge, but they have a total defense of 21. So if you compare them with these guys... They have just barely, they have even better attack and defense than these guys, but their charge is much poorer. Um, but they're definitely, like these guys have missiles as well, so after you use their missiles, just throw them into melee and they will do a very good job. And they are skilled against mounts, so against other cavalry units, they will do pretty, pretty good. And that is because they're, they are a cavalry arch unit, 
which have gotten a buff against other cavalry units in this patch. And now we come to the Thirithaya Knights, which is skilled against mounts, and they are effective against armor. These guys are beasts. They have a total defense of 28. Their attack is not too good. It's 8. It's still very good. But they, ha they are, of course, effective against armor. So if you throw these guys in against um, units which rely very much on their armor, these guys are going to crush them utterly. And these guys are definitely very good against other cavalry because cavalry lie very much on their armor. And in addition, they're skilled against mounts. So these guys are armor piercing specialists and cavalry specialists, but they will still crush normal um, infantry units as well. Very, very cool units. And now we come to the real pride of your army. This is one of the best cavalry units in the game. This is the Knights of the Silver Swan. These guys have 9 attack, 14 charge bonus, and they're 51 in the unit. That's just out of this world. And they have 33 total defense. They're very costly, but that doesn't really matter at the point you get these guys who have so much money. And these guys can throw down entire armies by themselves. It's, it's very, very interesting. And they inspire nearby troops, and they frighten nearby enemy infantry. And they usually just route entire units very easily because of this. They're just... And they're also fast moving, which you will often see. They move very fast and they will get incredible charges. Now in the Gondor campaign, I actually recruit a lot of these guys in the end. And I have like four of these units in one army. So definitely take a look at some of my older episodes in the Gondor campaign. Because then we use these guys to a very... Uh, we use them a lot. So that's very interesting. Alright, so that was basically all of your units. You can also get the trebuchet, which is um, which the Northern Dune and Gondor and Dol Amroth only can get. They are a very nice siege equipment. I'm, I'm not going to say much about it. It has an incredible range, uh, but it's not as accurate as a ballista and a catapult. But they have much larger spread damage. Alright. Now we're going to take a look at the other kind of units that Dolamroth can recruit through different kind of ways. So now we're going to first take a look at these five units right here, which are going to group into this group right here. So that's the Lamlon Clansmen, the Pinathgelin Cavalry, the Lebanon Marines, the Anfalus Pikemen, and the Blackroot Whale Archers. These can all be recruited from the Fiefdom Barracks uh, from turn one, to be honest, but you gotta of course build the fiefdom barracks first but they are going to be readily available from the Lamroth and it's definitely useful to get, to get these units I'm not going to cover these units in this video uh, if you want to take a look at these units uh, do check out my uh, Gondor guide because there I cover these units but I'm not going to go into detail of them right now and the other kind of units that you can actually get is the Harander mercenaries, which I didn't cover in the Gondorian video, but you can also get these guys for Gondor, and they come from the Harander region, and they're a quite nice unit to be honest. They have 15 total defense, which is quite solid, and they have 7 attack and 5 charge bonus, so they are very good units because they're effective against armor, but they are a bit susceptible to arrows to be honest and definitely javelins but they can be used to great potency if used correctly so definitely do recruit them if you are able to recruit them especially in the early game they're very, very good now another unit that you can recruit is the Minas Ethel Guardians but this requires uh, Minas Morgul and at least 35% culture uh, I'm not going to cover these guys uh, here either because they're already covered in the Gondorian video but they have very decent stats, very good uh, Spearman units, definitely up with the Elites. And these guys are also covered in the Gondorian video. Very good pikemen, will hold definitely. Uh, relies very much on their armor, but again, very good units. And we do also have these six units right here, but they require certain regions. 
The Ithilien regions can be recruited if you get Ithilien regions. So out of Ostethil, you'll actually be able to recruit these guys. And that's one reason in itself to go for the um, for, go for Mordor. Uh, that's another kind of campaign strategy, but it's kind of fun because you can get these guys and you will also, after uh, the barracks event, unlock the Oskelet veterans, the guards of Oskelet, if you take out uh, or hold Eastern Oskelet or Western Oskelet. So that's definitely three units which will definitely bring in some nice variety to your army. And it will give you the, ar the solid archers that you really need. Because these guys are very good, definitely. And then we also have the Lusternak Axemen. But these guys, as well as the ones of the White Tower and the Fountain Guard, is more if you actually decide to backstab Condor. But if you hold Lusternak, as well as Minas Tirith, you will get the ones of the White Tower and Fountain Guard. Uh, or at least the ones of the White Tower and the Fountain Guards come from Minas Tirith. And the Lossenak Axemen come from a Lossenak region. So you do can or you do have the option to backstab Condor and get a lot of very nice elites. Or you could potentially trade Minas Tirith for some nice regions. That's also an option. But these guys are definitely very good units. And I do cover them in the Gondorian video, so I'm not going to cover them here. But we're going to take a look at the units for the factions you're going to face, which can uh, potentially deal some damage to you. And we're going to, go, going to start with Harad, which have the Saffron Pikemen. The reason these guys are scary is because your army relies very much on cavalry, and Pikemen is always very effective against Pikemen. They have 4 attack, 4 charge bonus, 7 total defense, which is quite alright, but considering their pikes, they're very good. And they will definitely hold the line against most of your units. So these guys are going to be... You, you gotta deal with them with infantry and not your cavalry. Another unit which can potentially wreak some havoc is the Asa Sair Savages. Uh, this is an Ara Denaim unit. And the reason I have chosen to include these guys is because they're effective against armor. And they do not have a lot of defense. But you don't, do not have a lot of archer options. Uh, so these guys can be devastating to both your cavalry and your infantry. Because they are armor piercing. And they have a nice charge bonus and a nice attack. Uh, yeah, So they can, they can yield some damage. But the units I definitely want to look out for is Khand. Because they do have the normal Axemen. But that's not really the point. But they're effective against armor. And they're a nice unit which will... Slay most of your units, considering they have the effective against armor trait, and they're a decent holding unit. But the real threat is these guys, the Varag Nobles. And the reason these guys are hard to deal with is because you have a lot of cavalry. And not only will these guys outrun your cavalry and just shoot you, but in addition, they do have very good stats and they're skilled against... Uh, mounts and they are effective against armor So these guys are essentially a very good option to use against the Lamroth because you do not have the archers that can take them down because they have so much armor and They have a lot of total defense and uh, They do have missiles so an archer battle is not going to favor you And they're skilled against mounts and effective against armor which just makes them a very hard unit to take down my recommendation would be to charge in some cavalry, uh, some sacrifice cavalry, and then charge in some armor piercing units because they will uh, they will struggle then. And the Harunder mercenaries are a good unit for this because they're very fast moving. Or you can use the Lambdon clansmen, which is also armor piercing. But these guys are definitely a unit to be feared as the Lamroth. But try to surround them, that, that will definitely help out because there are not many in the unit number. I have also decided to include the Varag Horse Arches and the Warlord's Cataphract Arches. It's for basically the same reason. Uh, Archer Cavalry is or Horse Arches is going to be an issue for you. You don't really have any Horse Arches in the early game. You do get the White Knights of Elthelon, but that's way later in the 
in, in the later game and in the end game. And these guys are skilled against mounts and they can form shooting circles which makes them very hard targets. And it's the same with these guys, they're essentially an upgraded version and they are indeed good in melee after they have thrown their missiles and they have 8 missile attack which is very very good. So these guys can definitely yield a lot of damage to your troops and you want to make sure you are prepared for these guys. This looks very very cool as well. A reason to play Khan in itself. And they are... Horse Archers is your big enemy. Um, to be honest I think Horse Archers is a very strong unit in this game in general. Gondor also struggles to deal with these guys. But that's it for this uh, faction guide. I think I've covered a lot, but I definitely do want to improve my faction guides uh, for the future. Um, I'm going to take a look at what I can improve and please leave some feedback. I'll try to perhaps give some more details about uh, what kind of armor you can get on your troops and such. Uh, and more unique buildings for your faction and such. I'm going to cover that in the future. But uh, the non do that is going to be the next faction guide, so do look out for that. And I hope you enjoyed this faction guide. And definitely leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed uh, this video. Also support me via Patreon if you like. Uh, and I'll see you for the next uh, faction guide. And of course the Isengard and the Remnants of Angmar campaigns. So I'll see you guys.